dangerous to record-breaking rainfall expected next week as up to three tropical cyclones wrap themselves up in the Australian tropics. Your latest update brought to you by Force 13 AU. So quite a busy update, that's for sure, We're covering severe thunderstorms, dangerous tropical lows, which could wrap themselves up into tropical cyclones, and a potential Queensland cyclone towards the end of the 10-day forecast period. All of that plus more in the next 18 minutes for your January 14th cyclone update, brought to you by Force 13 AU. Um, there's quite a lot to look at, and you can see on the convective act, uh, satellite imagery just below uh, these slides right now, you can see a lot of thunderstorm activity firing across Australia's top end because of these mo of this monsoon trough that's wrapping up these tropical lows and you can see that's delivering very heavy rainfall which you can see up in the northern parts of the northern territory in western australia lots of rainfall lots of storms expected today and that will turn into rain on the cape york peninsula where a tremendous amount has already fallen over cams and mariba up to 150 millimeters is possible in some locations again today and that rainfall will also extend down the queensland uh, coastline down to new south wales and turn into storms inland Actually, there is quite a lot of widespread thunderstorm activity throughout Australia centre today. However, um, I haven't marked it considering it's going to be really hit and miss stuff. But basically, anywhere in Australia centre, just below the Tropic of Capricorn, actually, you're expecting thunderstorms at some point today because they will be very widespread, but there is going to be a lot of them, so some locations could definitely be impacted by some strong thunderstorms down uh, there. And we've got a low chance of that cyclone developing in the Bonaparte Gulf. In fact, I could probably drop that even lower than the uh, chances right now, but the chance is still there. There is also the 30% chance that it develops in the Gulf of Carpentaria. That will be from the same system. And we're also watching a 30% chance of cyclone development in the Solomon Sea, or in the Coral Sea, actually, just outside of New Caledonia. That will be around 8 to 10 days from now. And there's also a cyclone uh, possibly developing in the southwest Indian Ocean region that could impact the Cocos Keeling Islands in a couple of days' time. So now we're taking a look at rainfall from the Access G3 model. You can see as this tropical low moves inland, it becomes more and more defined next Monday and Tuesday, dumping an incredible amount of rainfall on the Northern Territory coastline uh, between Darwin and Wadi, and that will even extend across into Western Australia up towards Colombo, and then that rainfall will start to move inland. Uh, incredible rainfall totals are expected, and I'll break those down in detail before the cyclone parallels the Gulf of Carpentaria coastline, moves into Queensland, and then slowly dissipates there. But again, a tremendous amount of rainfall expected in central Queensland and even into northern parts of South Australia and New South Wales as the cyclone really dies off next next week and as it moves into New South Wales, we could be seeing a thunderstorm situation evolve out of that. So the temperature run for the next 10 days, you can see hot conditions across the nation's west for the next couple of days. Perth expecting another scorcher day. It got down to 30 degrees last night where I live, so ridiculously hot, and the hot weather is here to stay. But um, other than that, not too much in the way of hot weather nationwide um, or extreme temperatures um, nationwide. There might be a one or two hot days in the nation south next week into next weekend, but it's fairly stock standard, even though you can see 45 degree days fairly frequent across central western australia and south australia it's pretty normal for this type of the uh, time of the year and i wouldn't call this a heat wave uh, developing because it is as i said stock standard for the australian summer a very hot summer uh, that we get down under so looking at the excess winds uh, for the tropics you can see those cyclones um, really starting to spin them or not really cyclones but they're tropical lows by tuesday and wednesday the one in the gulf of carpentaria actually becomes a cyclone uh, maybe wednesday or thursday with 34 knot winds around the center as it hugs the uh, coast line of the Gulf of Carpentaria before it moves inland as a tropical low. And you can also see that cyclone starting to develop across the Cocos Islands and it basically just sits there for about eight days actually. It really doesn't do anything before it swings back around and dissipates close to Indonesia. And you can also see that very, very strong cyclone, which we're going to zoom into now next Monday and Tuesday, wrapping itself up in the Coral Sea before it beelines straight for Queensland, actually. Now, we're going to have to watch that one very closely because that is a concerning forecast. Here's a look at the IR satellite imagery. I'm sorry the borders aren't that defined. There's nothing I can do about that, unfortunately. But you can see a lot of thunderstorm activity firing up around Darwin and the Kimberley region of WA. And there's also a lot of thunderstorm activity streaming over the uh, northern reaches of Kakadu and the Northern Territory around Nullum and now moving into the Gulf of Carpentaria uh, around Mornington Island and Corumba, Burketown, those sort of areas and, some, and affecting those indigenous communities over there. So some strong thunderstorms moving through associated with these tropical lows. We're going to take a look at the forecast right now and see what's in store for the nation for the next 10 days. 
So the current picture across the nation's north is a wet one, let me tell you. A lot of rainfall falling around Darwin or up to Wadai and Kununurra and Wyndham in Western Australia. And also a lot of thunderstorm activity across the Northern Territory's coastline, moving into the Gulf of Carpentaria around the Cape York Peninsula um, and extending throughout the eight Indigenous communities between Burktown and up towards Weeper. And there's also some rainfall moving inland around the uh, Daintree Rainforest sort of region. That's going to dump quite a lot of rainfall there today and into tomorrow. We could be seeing some totals up to 200 millimetres in some locations but apart from that it's relatively dry across the nation just those thunderstorms down south around Perth and it is a hot one down there let me tell you as I said 30 degrees overnight last night it was brutal let me tell you um, so not nice for our Perth viewers but it hopefully will start to cool down a little bit over the next couple of days but enough of that rambling let's take a look at the forecast models over the next 10 days we're going to take a look at the cyclone or the tropical lows up in the northern territory first and we're going to jump over and take a look very briefly at the cyclone over the Cocos Keeling Islands and and then we're going to uh, give you a forecast of the Coral Sea ones. And then we'll talk about the thunderstorm situation down South Australia, New South Wales, Victoria and Tasmania. So stick around for the full 14 minutes. And if you haven't already, please do consider subscribing because we're nearing 11,000 subscribers and I'd love to have you on board. All right, so we'll start things off with a little look at the wind forecast and see where these tropical lows are. You can already see the first tropical low starting to spin itself up actually right over the top of what I right now. Um, towards the southwest of Daly River, and that's starting to spin itself up quite nicely. You can already see some fairly strong winds moving around the top end of the system, uh, streaming into around the Darwin area. Uh, these winds are approaching 25 knots sustained. You can already see wind observations up in the top end around 20 to 30 knots in some places, so it's a, it's a blustery day, and I imagine wave heights around the top uh, part of um, the Northern Territory are actually getting quite high, yeah, about three metres, so boating not advised up here uh, today, as I'm sure all of you know. Um, but yeah, some fairly strong winds associated with this tropical low. And you can already see some nice lower level rotation associated with this tropical low. You can sort of see this westerly flop in the north and then this very weak easterly and then southerly flow across uh, the central Northern Territory and into Western Australia. So it's definitely starting to form itself nicely, um, but it will take at least another couple of days to form. If it was to develop um, a lot more today and into tomorrow, as it's very close to the uh, coastline and over other waters of the Bonaparte Gulf, then I would give it a fighting chance of becoming a cyclone. But I mean, it's really got until about Monday afternoon until it heads uh, substantially too far inland to actually become a tropical cyclone. But that doesn't mean that the rainfall threat is going to be is extreme from this cyclone. I mean, look at this. Developing from tonight, you're looking at places receiving rainfall totals in excess of 25 millimetres an hour, and they last all through tonight into Monday, and they persist into Tuesday, and they only start to ease off of the coastline, maybe Tuesday even. Wednesday morning and then they start to move inland but there's still these really heavy rainfall totals so you're expecting rainfall along the Northern Territory coastline to um, hover in the a sort of 500 to 750 millimetres. And if you were to take a look at rainfall accumulation, that's reciprocated there on the ECMWF forecast, up to 500, 600 millimetres for a lot of locations on the coastline. And then inland as well around Daly River, you're looking at six to 700 millimetres in one or two locations. Daly River itself expecting 400 and up towards Darwin from the ECMWF model over the next three days, another 200 millimetres up there. That's on top of the 50 that they've already had. And I believe the access model is actually a lot more aggressive with the rainfall. And I believe that this is actually going to be a lot more accurate to the picture that we are expecting to unfold. I'm expecting near record totals of rainfall to fall over the next three to five days and I'm thinking anywhere up towards 800 millimetres is definitely possible across the Northern Territory coastline and up on towards Melville Island as well. Uh, you'd be expecting anywhere up towards 200 millimetres along the coastline but it looks inland. It looks like inland communities are spared from the worst of the rainfall on Melville Island. That's interesting. I don't know if that's a model glitch or not or if that's just um, the climate on Melville Island, so please let me know in the comments. But yeah, a lot of rainfall expected, and you can also see just these rivers here, they are going to swell, uh, swell to many times their major flood level. This is going to be a major flooding emergency are uh, developing over the next couple of days with this ridiculous quantity of rainfall. So I'd be expecting rivers to maybe be 50% higher than their major flood levels. And there will be a lot of rivers that break their record flood levels. So um, make sure you're really keeping an eye on the current flood warnings from the Bureau of Meteorology because it is imperative that you stay safe in this sort of event. If it's flooded, forget it because there is just, there's no point in chasing after flooded things because you'll just end up becoming a statistic from this cyclone or this tropical low, whatever it ends up being. And even though it 
is a tropical low. It's not even going to become a cyclone at this point. It is a very, very dangerous rain event. So make sure you are staying safe and playing it really smart in an event like this. And if you are in the firing line of this event, make sure you've got your flood plans uh, into high gear right now. You're protecting your livestock. You're protecting your property, sandbagging, uh, moving things out of low ground. If you've got a shed in low ground, there's valuable equipment in there. Make sure you're getting all of that equipment up into high ground because there is a very high chance that a lot of floodplains here just become inland seas. And that's also what's going to drive a lot of this further rainfall is the fact that a lot of this is going to become an inland sea or a marsh across the Northern Territory for at least a week or two. This uh, tropical low is going to have ample energy to be able to fire convection uh, through a process what's called the brown ocean effect and that's going to be able to uh, that's going to allow this storm to fire new thunderstorm convection um over itself and basically just enhance the amount of rainfall that we are expecting. And again, over the next three days, the rainfall will extend into the Gulf of Carpentaria, places around Mornington Island expecting up to 500 millimetres of rain over the next three days. But it's a grimmer picture if you take it to a five-day forecast period. You're looking at places in a, uh, picking up in excess of 1,200 millimetres of rain. And in fact, there could even be one or two locations with more than 1,500 millimetres of rain around Burkton. So um, that's, what, three years' worth of rainfall for a lot of these places. It's ridiculous stuff. It's not absolutely unprecedented. Keep in mind, it's the Australian tropics. Anything is possible up here. Um, but it is ridiculous rainfall totals. And hopefully they do stay out to sea or at least on the coastline so they don't cause this catastrophic flooding emergency that 1500 millimeters of rain would cause over a couple of days. But I mean, I mean, I'm just seeing a lot of rainfall falling over river catchments, 500 millimeters here and there. And that's going to cause some devastating flooding in far north Queensland as well. And shout out to Gordon Cloncurry, who's also watching our videos. Uh, I read your comment yesterday. Uh, preparing for uh, stuff in Cloncurry, you're expecting probably five to 600 millimetres over the next 10 days at a worst case scenario. So again, a flooding situation is expected to unfold there. And because it's going to be consistent rainfall as well, the first 100 millimetres should just flow down the creeks, but it will saturate the catchment. So any further rainfall on top of the first 100 or 200 millimetres uh, will turn into a flooding emergency. So you're expecting rivers to get to the, at least a minor flood level across a lot of Queensland and the Northern Territory. And then there will be one or two rivers that go absolutely apeshit and become major flutters or even break their record flooding levels. So it is a concerning forecast and we need to be watching this very closely. And a lot will happen on the forecast in the next couple of days. And a lot will change with the amount of rainfall that we are expected over the coming couple of days as we really get an idea of where this system goes. And I would like to point out an interesting variable. The Axis G3 model calls for this storm to parallel the Queensland coastline and the Northern Territory coastline on the Gulf of Carpentaria before moving inland around Burkton. However, the ECMWF forecast model actually calls this cyclone to basically basically stall south of Catherine or Tyndall around the Elliott Wave Hill sort of area and then move inland across the Northern Territory. And it kind of spares Queensland or at least central Queensland from the worst of the rainfall. Um, the coast still gets absolutely hammered in terms of rainfall either way, but it does move inland up towards Alice Springs and drenches um, the Northern Territory. So that's an interesting picture. And it, a lot can change over the coming couple of days because if this low does turn inland sooner, then it will be a worst case scenario for the Northern Territory. But if it does it later, then it will be the worst case scenario for Queensland. But either way, the Cape York Peninsula, the entirety of it, will receive at least 200 millimetres of rain over the next 10 days. That's unanimous across a lot of the forecast models. Um, so yeah, uh, that's regardless of what happens. Um, so a concerning picture, that's for sure, in terms of rainfall. And then later on, it moves into uh, the top part of New South Wales and then across to Victoria and drops a lot of rainfall there. But I'll touch on that a little bit later on. And I would like to say that the GFS has another interesting forecast. You know how it's been calling for this low to sort of move out across the West Australian coastline and into the Indian Ocean by around next Monday and Tuesday? Well, it still has that forecast and it does rapidly intensify it as it passes Broome. Um, and it bottoms out as what looks to be maybe a Category 2 strength tropical cyclone on approach to Caratha or Port Hedland. So that's something that we'll be watching closely on this channel as well. Um, but I don't think that that's a very likely forecast at this point. I don't think that's a plausible scenario. But we will now take a look at the tropical cyclones up over the Cocos Islands because there's one of them here. It kind of develops next Tuesday or Wednesday. This is the one that's most likely to get the name on the Australian naming list of Kiralee. And then if this one gets named, it will likely get the name of Lincoln. But if either of get, neither of them get named, then Kiralee will still remain the next cyclone name. Because again, but these systems could just end up being tropical lows. But this one could be a devastating tropical low. I 
can't reiterate that enough. But yeah, this one does hover around West Island on the Cocos Islands and then moves towards Christmas Island as a tropical cyclone. And this has been pretty consistent on the forecast. So I'd say that that's a good chance of occurring. And then taking a look at the Queensland situation, a monster cyclone expected to develop here next Sunday and Monday. So you're looking at the 22nd of the 23rd of January. Pressure in the 966 millibars. This is a very strong system. Um, heading for the Coral Sea Islands and so forth, and then the Queensland coastline. Very strong indeed. And if this does uh, be light at for Queensland, then that's a concerning forecast. But the fuel is there for this to become a very powerful tropical cyclone, that's for sure. And you're looking at peak wind gusts, probably approaching the 100 knot threshold. Um, but I guess this isn't really a well-backed scenario. The ECM relief model actually has a really weak cyclone here of maybe Category 1 proportions. So yeah, the takeaway from that is a cyclone is possible in the Coral Sea at a 30 to 50% chance, um, but a major cyclone like this, a severe tropical cyclone as per the Access G3 forecast, is relatively unlikely at this point. But we will get greater details on this as we get into um, uh, the later parts of next week. Um, and then now for the thunderstorm situation that I've been talking about for quite a while. Next Wednesday and Thursday, you're going to see this uh, cold front or warm front actually move through Victoria and Tasmania. And you're looking at a thunderstorm situation Wednesday night and into Thursday morning for uh, Victoria and Tasmania. And then thunderstorms Thursday night across New South Wales. But the forecast has been back down. We're not really expecting these to become really severe anymore. The severe thunderstorms are kind of reserved for the day, uh, weekend of the 20th and the 21st. And then if the remnants of either tropical cyclone Lincoln or Kiralee or whatever this system gets named or uh, the tropical low I think it's 03U moves into New South Wales then you're looking at a rainfall situation here or a thunderstorm situation really depending on how it goes but again um, a lot of variables in this forecast and if the cyclone turns inland sooner then New South Wales and Victoria will completely miss out on the thunderstorms it is a very very unpredictable forecast it's a very difficult forecast to make I'm really trying my best here but I really cannot say what's going to happen for sure um, that's just a little bit out of my realm of uh, <laughs> forecasting right now. I don't think anyone can say for certain what the weather across Australia will look like over the next 10 days. But we know for sure that a major amount of rainfall is expected across the Northern Territory and Queensland. So if you are in these zones, uh, in the, basically anywhere in the blue zones here, um, expect major flooding because it's possible in a lot of locations. It's going to be a bit hit and miss the further inland you get, but especially close to the coastline, expect some major flooding from a lot of these rivers here because it is, it's a tremendous tremendous amount of rainfall. In a lot of places, it's more than a year's worth. Of, and in, in fact, in even more places, it's more than two years worth of rainfall around Mount Isa that is going to fall over the next 10 days. So a serious situation unfolding, and you really do need to be keeping up to date with the Bureau of Meteorology, keeping up to date with us for your latest forecast every single day, and making sure that you're playing it safe and playing it smart in floods. But on that note, that's basically all that I have time for. I'd like to note I'm going on a quick fishing trip um, on Tuesday the 16th, and I'll be back on Thursday the 18th. So there won't be any videos on Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, but I'll be back on Friday before I head away for Australia Day again on the 26th, and I'll be back on the 31st, I believe. So... Uh, quite a lot of uh, holidays, I guess, over the next 15 days on my part. So between those dates, it's unlikely that I'll be able to produce any videos. And I do apologize in advance for that. But you bet daily videos when I am around. Uh, it's kind of difficult balancing this channel with my work commitments and so forth. But I am trying my hardest. And I'm very, very happy to be bringing you the forecast and be reaching the amount of people that I am reaching and seeing all of your lovely comments. It really does mean a lot. And it is quite touching. So thank you so, so much uh, from Josh and the Force 13 AU crew. Because I really, really do appreciate it very, very much. So thank you. Thank you very, very much. It really does mean a lot. Um, please leave your feedback in the comment section uh, down below. There's a lot to talk about in this. And if you've got anything that you would like to see in these videos, make sure that you do leave it because I'm reading every single comment. So I'm trying to reply to all of them as well, but there is just so many of them and most of them are just really, really nice as well. So thank you so, so much. It does mean a lot, but that is basically all that I have time for. Uh, thank you so much for watching and I will catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye. Thank you for watching our content this update. If you enjoyed it, be sure to subscribe to get more updates covering all things weather and geophysics impacting Australia and the Oceania region. Subscribe to our other channels for more content from across the network and be sure to check out our website where you can find free access to floater and radar imagery and articles on everything weather and much more. If you wish to support us directly, you can purchase some of our merchandise. We have a wide variety of clothing and homeware. Or you could become an ultimate fan, which is the best way to directly support us, granting you some sweet perks and offers, including features in our custom storm animations, live streams, and much more.